This section is on unit vectors, but we'll start with a question. What do you get when you multiply a scalar by a vector? Here are some examples. 3s. 3 is a number. It's a scalar with no units. S is a displacement. Another example, ma, where m is a mass, a scalar, and a is the acceleration, a vector. Here's a third example. 2 metres north is a vector. 2 metres is the magnitude, it's a scalar, so how big is north? Think of the two terms as a product. How big is north? Well, the magnitude of the whole vector is 2 metres, so the magnitude of north must be 1. Not 1 metre, just 1. So north is an example of a unit vector in the positive direction of north. We already have a word for in the positive direction of north. It's just north. Wouldn't it be useful to have a similar shorthand for in the positive x direction, or the y and the z direction? So we define i, j, and k as unit vectors. We write them with a circumflex or hat to remind us that they're unit vectors. So now we can write any vector in terms of its components and unit vectors. a sub x is the component of vector a in the x direction, and a sub x equals a cos theta. So we can draw a vector a sub x i in the x direction and another vector a sub y j in the y direction. Add these up to get a equals ax i plus ay j. From Pythagoras, a is equal to the square root of ax squared plus ay squared. And theta equals 10 to the minus 1 a sub y over a sub x. If we write c equals a plus b, then we can substitute for a and b using our components and unit vectors. Then we can rearrange, gather the terms in i and j, giving us an equation now for the x and y components of vector c. Notice that in two dimensions, a single vector equation gives two scalar equations. This is really important in problem solving. One vector equation allows you to solve for two unknown scalars. One particularly important case is the vector equation 0 equals 0. A famous example of that is Newton's first law. Sigma f equals ma, where sigma f equals 0. This equation, 0 equals 0, is the starting point for an engineering subject called statics. <laughs> statics is especially important in civil engineering, because in that discipline, clients usually prefer that objects like bridges and buildings have zero acceleration. While we're looking at vector components, let's do Pythagoras' theorem in three dimensions. What is the magnitude of A? To start, look at the hypotenuse h in the xy plane. Pythagoras gives h squared equals ax squared plus ay squared. Now, look at the triangle with sides h, az, and a. Here, Pythagoras gives a squared equals h squared plus az squared. Substituting for h gives us a squared equals ax squared plus ay squared plus az squared. And that gives us the expression for the magnitude of A in terms of its components. A is equal to square root AX squared plus AY squared plus AZ squared. What about four dimensions, I hear you ask? Well, it's not in our syllabus this year, but I'll write down the answer anyway. Mm -hmm.